Hi, today I'm going to review Pocket Chip. More than a year ago, in May 2015, I ordered Chip and Pocket Chip through the Kickstarter campaign of a company called Nextthink Co. They were promoting Chip as a 9 US dollar computer, but actually the delivery to my place was 15 US dollars. I also bought peripheral devices as well as an additional chip, so the total bill was approximately 100 US dollars. At the end of the day, the 9 US dollar computer is a part of a loss leader pricing strategy, but I still consider it as a good value for money. I received my order 40 months later. This was close to the promised delivery date, so I think this is a good sign for a startup company. Pocket Chip comes in a nice box which brings me memories and associations with the early 90s or even the 80s. On the back you can see how to get started. The usage is super simple. Just get Pocket Chip out of the box, charge it and after that hold the home button to turn it on. The technical specifications include 1GHz Owner Air 8 system on a chip with Mali GPU, 512MB of RAM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and 4 gigabytes of storage. The design of Pocket Chip reminds me Game Boy. As its name suggests, you can hold Pocket Chip in your pocket. It is great that I can always plug a pencil to hold it up. Pocket Chip has 3000 mAh battery which can run up to 5 hours. There is a 4.3 inch resistive touchscreen display and a hardware QWERTY keyboard. It is a toy for geeks, so on top of it, there are some GPIOs. The chip on the back is removable so you can use it for other projects too. You can also disassemble the whole case, the display and the battery. A GNU Linux distribution is running on Pocket Chip. The whole project is open source. Pocket Chips comes with pre-installed Linux terminal, games, music and text editor as well as a file manager. All applications are on the home screen. On the left there is a menu to turn off or upgrade Pocket Chip. On the right there are settings. You can connect to a Wi-Fi but beware there is no web browser. The lack of a web browser is really frustrating. This is the first mobile device with a display and without a browser that I see in ages. I connected it to my Wi-Fi. Let's open the terminal to verify that there is internet connection by pinging my blog. While the terminal is open, I'll show you the Linux kernel version. Chip works with the mainline kernel. This is awesome because for a long time, Owner devices were stacked to the ancient version 3.4. Mainline kernel support is done by Free Electrons and the Sunxi community. As far as I heard, it was particularly funded by Nextfink Co. The default GNU Linux distribution on Pocket Chip comes with Systemd. I haven't installed anything additional yet, so I have 3.2 GB of free disk space. The next demo is with Play Pico 8. This is an open source project for games. The graphics look like the games from my childhood. It's unpleasant that half of the screen remains empty. I'm an awful gamer, but I'll quickly show you a couple of games. Honestly, I don't feel comfortable with the hardware keyboard. It looks good, but the buttons are actually not convenient at all, especially for lame players like me. Furthermore, unlike modern smartphones, which have a capacitive touchscreen, Pocket Chip relies on a resistive touchscreen display. Here comes the best part about the games. It is awesome that you can modify the source code on the fly. This way, even I have a chance to go to the next level. Next, I'll show you the Make Music app. You need headphones to use it. The user interface is not convenient for a small touchscreen display.
The text editor is very basic. Its user interface is also not appropriate for small touchscreen display. Probably next time I should use a stylus. The same is valid for the file manager. There is another application called Get Help. Apart from the tutorial, if you scroll to the bottom, you will find details about the open source software projects loaded on Pocketchip. In my opinion, Pocketchip is a toy for grown-ups. The design is impressive for geeks like me, but the user experience is not good. I don't expect that kids will like it because the games look awful compared to the modern games that they play on their tablets. In the same time, I expect that a lot of developers will have some fun and will share new games for Pocketchip. Actually, this is already happening. As a user, I don't like the keyboard and the touchscreen. The apps are too basic, so honestly, I won't be using Pocketchip much. On the other hand, Chip, the 9 US dollar computer, is way more interesting because it could be useful for hobby projects and IoT prototyping. As a software engineer, I'm really happy that this is an open source project and Nextthing Co. cares about upstreaming changes to U-Boot and the Linux kernel. This is a good for the whole Sungsi community. Thank you for your attention. This was a quick review of Pocketchip. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'm planning another technical review just of Chip. In the meantime, you can have a look at my strictly technical videos related to Raspberry Pi.